that. Yeah, of and course. then like if I I, f I work out yeah, if I hit him with raw FS, like just not not like just not like obviously I, uh, he parried a few, but if I miss time my FS and hit him, he'll always di in because he's always running towards me. Yeah. So if he di's in, I'm just gonna f air, f air, f air. All right, looks and like we're getting underway we're here. So we've got winners Neeson side and Splice. Winners semis. Yeah. This is Splice. quite interesting because the last. I believe the last three times that these guys have faced, Neeson has actually 3 0 would Splice. Yes, but they did do a money match uh, after the last tournament yes. in which uh, Neeson beat Splice. Splice money matched Neeson for all the winnings and won. Yeah, so Splice actually 3 0 him and I've spoken to Neeson quite a bit about that set um, just before this one and he was telling me that Splice was playing a very sort of campy style, playing very slow and Neeson in that money match didn't really want to play that style, but he yep. said he's completely willing to yep. do whatever it takes to win yep. this set. So like, um, I'm I'm really good friends with Spice, and um, when we were playing Roller Roller Series, Ooh, that's that first he kill. was he was my training partner, and like, basically the way he says like, Atlas is really really hard to get in on. He has to play really really lame. Like Russell just has to just oh yeah, bide his time and be completely lame. Mm. And like it, sometimes Spice is not up for it. Sometimes he is. It just depends on his mindset. Yeah, sometimes he's really willing to execute on that plan, but just in bracket, no, it's I boring. feel like... It's yeah. like playing, like, like if your optimal strategy is to be lame in camp, it's, it's really not, not, not fun. Like, <laughs> like, like I was saying with, with uh, Neeson, like, a lot of the best frags don't like to play the optimal way, because the optimal way is centralized around rock. Yeah, of and, course. And being, like, really zony and, like, keeping stage control and not committing too much. I think I'm the only crack that sort of plays that sort of style, commit but too I much, still don't. Then, like, you, you're at risk. Because all of his stuff is, like, he can't really combo. He's, he's based off of, like, reading the opponent and getting some a good hard read off, so he yeah. can get a really good punish. Splice is doing very well in saying into Nico's face there. Wow. <laughs> Oh, there right, we go. So that was a really good, really good uh, platform. Neeson with a with a little uh, little cheek smile. Have you have spot. you heard about Neeson's Ken combo with Atlas? Uh yes, yeah, I have heard. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to see that because I, I think it's quite tricky against um against a Rasta. Yeah. So Neeson plays Marth in Super Smash Brothers. So yeah, you definitely know. you can definitely see that in the way he plays um Atlas off stage. It was funny because if you want to fu bloody play Marth, you should play Forza. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, when, um, when Atlas came out, he was just he so was keen on playing the bee, the bear. The bear. Uh, so Neeson was initially a Maple main. Um, before, when the community first started, um, me and Splice were like top two dogs. But Splice yeah. never came to the tournament, so I just swept everything for like three months. <laughs> Neeson was the only one to like move up my heels. Granted, like, um, me and Splice stopped, and then Neeson and you, obviously. Yeah, I entered the scene a couple now, months uh, later. You know, so we've got a very healthy, you know, top four, you know, sort of. Back yeah, Victoria's back scene is actually really good with that sort of back and forth. Yeah, it's not like we Gabe who just like dominates everything in New South Wales. Like, it's just boring. It's just boring that way. A little bit of excitement, you know? A little bit of upset. Alright, now, ne back to the game. We yeah, Neeson about the is game. actually very sh he's struggling to approach Splice in well, any way uh, right now. This isn't a really strong stage for Edelus because, like, the pl platforms allow um, uh, Rasta to really short hop and get his short Top aerials up and constantly juggling. Yeah. He can wave land onto platforms to refresh his jump if he needs. So it's, Which it's more Splice like, is yeah. very good at. Splice is it's very, it's very, very scary player, how yeah. he can. Yeah, the technical player is definitely the way I yeah, describe Splice it. Splice one of the um, like top Smash Brothers melee players. Um, he's just one of the top Smash yeah. players in general. He's good at pretty much all of these games. He's 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 a very 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 smart person, and if he really wants to get good at anything, he will. I, I always enjoy when he gets the notebook out. Oh, the DI on that Nair was <laughs> not good at all. I just, oh, far, so far rough, so far left. I'm not sure if you've seen his um, notes on Rasta. Uh, have you seen his notes on Falco? Uh, I've seen all of his notebooks. 64 it's insane. pages, multiple booklets. But his uh, Rasta one, he's actually Ooh, mashed okay. out. Alright, let's start for Neeson, carrying that uh, side B. Showing that I am it. not yeah. scared of your uh, <laughs> tactics. You cannot dominate me. Up tilt to back here was really nice. Oh, mistiming that parry there, and now he is kind of food. I feel like Neeson is definitely the type of player who gets a slow burn read on these players during his sets, and is willing to adapt and very quickly adjust. Neeson is sort of, um, he, he takes a little bit longer to adapt, but he's he's like, it takes him about a game to get, get into his own zone and understand yeah. what his character does. Um, something with Neeson is that I feel like he, 
he, if he sees like a swag opportunity, he'll go for it. Oh, absolutely. That, that can work for or against him, depending on uh, the situation at hand. I always expect the offstage edge guard, uh, edge guard in any single scenario because uh, he's yeah, willing to go absolutely. for it. Absolutely. Like, um, I feel like Neeson needs to like, cause because like Billy is always playing, like he's looking for his opening. Sometimes he will like run off stage um, on purpose. Neeson needs to like capitalize on these moments to see if he can get like you know the quick neutral beat down and get some armor. Well, he's doing well here. He, he went okay, for the like Neeson can combo. <laughs> It's good to see. There's, there's like, oh, there we go. There's the up there. Oh, see, there we go. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. He needs that. He needs those armor. That that armor win. Anytime you can get it. I feel like he's him and Gabe in particular really, really, really are very healthy, good really at applying good. armor whenever they can. But there's just not much room in this matchup yeah. to apply it. You have to apply it whenever you get him off stage like that. Whenever, especially in a kill, that is your perfect opportunity to get armor. And Mason is definitely good at that. Wow. Boss is just very scary with those struggles. He is, he is. He's, um, basically, he worked out that if he's going to play Roa, he's going to hit you once. Oh, and yeah. And he's going to zero to death you with that one hit. Yeah, that's, he, that's he, his he knows how to react to all the different weight yeah. classes, all the different DI, at yeah. all percentages. So I much. feel like, like, going back into history, Billy started off as a force man. Yeah. He loved force man. But, like, the thing is, like, it just happened that the game stopped centralizing around his specials and started centralizing around like keeping his normal. He's normal. Yeah. Um, I would have preferred it the other way. I would have wanted to develop the specials where, with the Chrome being able to like, control it with your. With I your know. Game. I know. Billy has been very yeah. vocal about and then, having. That and then, like, of. even nerfing his normals and making it more centralized around his specials. But like, it's just Horseman's kind of in this weird area where he's like. Sure, he's got good normals, but he's like specials are so good that there's really like like nothing interesting about. Well, we, we saw Drizzle using um clone in a very anyway, oh well, really good. Um, the down special there. The down special. Yeah, I know this down special is so underrated. I I think like it's such a good mix up. Like you can't like if if you know your opponent is gonna go win, you down special. Yeah. It's it's so good, especially in a matchup like this. You know, Rask is, Rask is gonna juggle you from below. Like you know, as soon as you get out of his like. Like, and you've got that little bit of room. Obviously, there's start up on down special, but like, it's pretty good to stop as a combo stop. Mm. Alright, so jab, jab, up still. Oh, oh, what was that? <laughs> it was side B into parry. Oh, true combo. There's the juggle. Alright, good DI out. Making sure that he doesn't get continually juggled. Nice to not be very early yeah. because he expected it. Oh, nice parry there. Goes for the up B hard. Sweet spot. I find that Neeson always side specials when he's off stage like this. Yeah. And it's actually very risky for him, but no one has um been punishing it with a parry just yet. Yeah. I feel like certain players have, but just we haven't seen it in brackets it's, so far. It's the timing is really hard. Ma mainly because I haven't played I don't play much role. Oh yeah, time. it's all um but audio like, the cue timing and just for, sort of yeah, side B is really hard because like not even the audio cue, it's like the um oh, he's just watching 